I first met a chair head on at Camberwell in the life room. John Dodson, he was teaching life drawing. The model had a break and he sat down beside me and I thought he'd talk about the drawing, but he said there's a chair over there and it's about 12 to 15 feet away. It's an ordinary chair. All he said was, do you see? I'd look again, very earnestly, do you see? Then started really seeing the chair as a marvellous entity. I looked at the spaces underneath, the construction of the chair, and a, a sort of aura around came about this chair. He said once again, like a kind of mantra, just do you see? best lesson I've ever had, because what he was in fact doing was to make me see something very ordinary in a very special way. Suppose it's already well bashing it, you come down to getting it to fit together. Funny business issue, I don't know whether you're the master or the servant. The master being the painting. And I got one particular chair, which I had in a studio in Chelsea in 1956. It's taking me a kind of journey which I normally wouldn't make. You start thinking a simple chair, then you realise what a beautiful piece of workmanship it is in the first place, and then the history in, involved in it, one's relation to it as an object of over 60 years, and so on. It's, it's all quite intoxicating, really. So far, the, the main principal chair has been put through various situations is the Lawrence Olivier of chairs. Here, he, the chair is about, I hope, life-size to present a back view. So I'm a little bit of a voyeur. That's where I'm creeping up, as it were, Susanna and the Elders feeling. I don't talk about Susanna and the Elders, that me being one of the Elders. Lightly. Here yeah, this chair is naked and I hope to give it the same presence as Rembrandt did himself. It was me the background is everything, yes. And therefore relationships right across a sort of web of relationships. Here we are on the dull day, stodgy mind. Probably need a coffee. And so it's a sharp one up, and then, and then you start seeing the hole. But I'm not seeing the hole at the moment. I have no idea what happens out there. Seeing this at the same time as uh, there's a naughty bit of blue up there, a, a um, postcard. Maybe paint with the left hand. It's just approximate. What should we do on my birthday but paint? It sounds a bit silly, really, being 96 and uh, not knowing how one got here. Uh, I'm well aware that one's got to go on. But I'd rather have ten on the go. So as not to be under pressure with any of them, particularly.
Maybe I should leave the money book on there. Luck plays a great part in painting. This is a very useful brush. It's worn right down, very little hair in it, but it, it's for putting definite marks on it. It's unsurpassable, like that. The other thing about painting is that you're about five minutes behind a thought, um, gasping for breath, as it were, to catch up with what it demands of me. What a lovely colour it is. It's funny, I feel that I'm being very bold, but actually when it comes down to it, it's not very bold. It's just all over the place, really. Seeing the same thing as I've been painting yesterday on the big one here. It's not never boring. I'm sort of beginning to get to know it. You don't know about a subject really until you start drawing it. That's why it's such a good thing to draw from a picture, a Rembrandt will say, or something. Mood does come into it. Again, that's rarely talked about. And very often when you're in a bad mood, or kind of, oh, that's the time when you do best, actually, because you're up against it. I do think it's being up against it and finding it difficult an immense challenge, really. Because you don't give it up, you persist. And you get hooked into it and, and grapple with it. <laughs> what you want and what you do just doesn't come together, hardly ever. I think as a foundation, okay. Well, at least it's all over, um, uh, and the whole thing's dealt with. It's got more light. That's what I want to get. I want to get a real frisson. So that it dazzles. I sometimes think it's about the only thing I can do to be different in this modern age that I could add to the light brigade. You've got to have some sort of belief in yourself. You can deliver something which is poetical and uh, says something to every sort of age, really. I want to drive the chairs, if they could shiver with fright or elation, it doesn't matter what, if they, if they could come together, driven by force, hope there's a sort of drama where it happens. Space, flat. No good if it's not flat. I don't understand whether that's modern or not. It's very old, but it's, it's, tr it's true. 
all the way long, I've been wrong about the mirror. Too low, you've got, got to compromise. It's a mixture of spontaneity, but one's got to respect the geometry at the same time. It's nothing to do with feelings or anything. It's, it's, it's the, trying to get the bloody thing right. There's one thing about oil paint, you can mudge it in and see what it looks like. And, and it, ha it looks severely diminished now, and sort of something confrontational. There's something receding about it. So up we go again. We had to do that to find out. It's sort of nebulous, it's smoky. The last thing I want is a kind of smokiness. I want definition. I must say, every day I paint this, it's completely different, because of the angle of the sun and all that kind of thing. It's almost impossible. Well, miracles can happen if you let yourself go, just to see what you see. What I've got to remember is the great big bass notes of the bottoms of the chairs. Dock, 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 like that. Very uh, staccato, repeating, which hasn't come out properly yet. I heard Shostakovich. Repetitions are so good. Anyhow, it got in my head, I think, a bit here. There's a whole new sort of angst which comes out in modern painting and I, I hope to, at least I share that sort of angst of where well, one has a go at it and hopes for the best.